Have you ever stopped to consider how important data collection is in our everyday lives, especially in research? Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel. Data collection is like the unsung backbone of our information-driven age. It's a systematic process, diligently working behind the scenes, gathering and measuring information on various elements of interest. It's not just about collecting data, but it's about collecting relevant, high-quality data that can help us answer the questions we're seeking answers to. Imagine you're a detective trying to solve a case. You wouldn't just gather any clues, would you? You'd look for the ones that help you solve the mystery. That's exactly what data collection is. It's the process of seeking out and identifying those key pieces of information that enable us to evaluate outcomes, make informed decisions, and ultimately solve our research mysteries. Without data collection, we wouldn't be able to make informed decisions or develop solutions to problems. It's the stepping stone to knowledge and understanding. Methods of data collection. Now that we grasp the significance of data collection, it's time to delve into the methods used to collect this data. When we talk about data collection methods, we're primarily looking at two types, qualitative and quantitative. These might sound like big, scary words, but don't worry, we'll break them down together. Let's start with qualitative data. This type of data is all about the quality of something, its characteristics, its properties, its unique elements. It isn't concerned with numbers or statistics, but rather it's all about understanding concepts, thoughts, or experiences. Imagine you're researching people's favorite ice cream flavors. Qualitative data would be the detailed descriptions of why someone loves mint chocolate chip, or the childhood memories that make vanilla special to another person. On the other hand, we have quantitative data. This is where the numbers come into play. It's all about measurements and counts, the quantity of something. Sticking with our ice cream example, quantitative data would be the number of people who prefer chocolate over strawberry, or the average number of times a person eats ice cream in a month. Each method has its own strengths. Qualitative data is fantastic for providing rich detailed insights into a topic. It helps us understand the why behind the numbers. However, it can be time consuming to collect and analyze, and it's not always easy to generalize from it. Quantitative data, meanwhile, is great for giving us hard facts and statistics. It can be collected from a large number of people quickly and relatively easily, and it's straightforward to analyze using statistical methods. But it might not provide the full picture or explain why people behave the way they do. In essence, the key is to understand when to use which method. Sometimes, a mix of both can provide the most comprehensive understanding of a topic. These two methods, qualitative and quantitative, form the backbone of all data collection methods. And understanding these methods will set the foundation for your journey into the world of research. So, grab your notepads and let's dive deeper into the fascinating world of data collection in the next segment. Deep dive into observation. Let's focus on one of the most common data collection methods, observation. Now, observation may sound like a simple concept, but it's far from that. It's a systematic, structured method that involves watching and recording behaviors or occurrences without interfering in the setting or with the subjects. This method is particularly useful when the research goal is to study real-life situations or behaviors in their natural environment. However, not all observation methods are created equal. There are mainly two types of observation, participant and non-participant observation. Participant observation is when the researcher immerses themselves in the environment or situation they are studying. They might live in a community, participate in their activities, observe their customs, and so on. This method allows the researcher to gain deep insights and understand the nuances of the situation or behavior. On the other hand, non-participant observation involves the researcher remaining detached from the subjects or situation they are studying. They might be physically present, but do not participate in the activities or interact with the subjects. This allows for a more objective perspective, but it may also limit the depth of understanding that can be achieved. Let's take an example. Suppose a researcher wants to study the behavior of children in a playground. If they choose the participant observation method, 
they might join the children in their games, interact with them, and observe their behavior from within. If they choose the non-participant observation method, they would watch the children from a distance, noting their interactions without being a part of them. Both methods have their strengths and weaknesses. Participant observation allows for a deeper, more nuanced understanding of the situation or behavior, but it also risks bias as the researcher becomes part of the situation. Non-participant observation, on the other hand, allows for a more objective perspective, but it may limit the depth of understanding. Observation, while seemingly simple, is a powerful tool in the hands of a researcher. It allows them to gather qualitative data, understand behaviors and situations in their natural context, and make informed conclusions based on what they see and experience. It's a fascinating world of discovery, one where the researcher takes on the role of a detective, piecing together the story from the clues they observe. The interview method, another important method of data collection, is the interview. Now this isn't your everyday chit-chat over a cup of coffee. An interview, in the context of data collection, is a structured conversation. It's a dance of words where one person leads with questions and the other follows with answers. Let's start by picturing an interview. Imagine a seesaw. On one end, we have the interviewer, armed with questions. On the other, the interviewee, ready with answers. The goal of this seesaw game is to maintain a balance, a flow of information from one end to the other. But remember, each seesaw game is different, just like every interview. Speaking of differences, let's talk about the types of interviews. First up is the structured interview. This is the kind of interview where everything is planned in advance. The questions are prepared, the order is set, and there's little room for improvisation. It's like a well-rehearsed play, with the interviewer as the director and the interviewee as the actor. Next, we have unstructured interviews. These are the polar opposite of structured interviews. Here, the interviewer has a general idea of what they want to know, but how they get there is all up to the flow of the conversation. It's like going on a road trip without a map, allowing for spontaneous detours and unexpected discoveries. Finally, there's the semi-structured interview. This is a hybrid of the previous two. The interviewer has a set of questions but isn't bound by them. They can add, remove, or change the order of the questions based on the flow of the conversation. It's like having a map for your road trip but being open to taking a detour if something interesting pops up. So why do we use interviews? Well, interviews offer a deeper insight into a subject's experiences, feelings, and perceptions. They allow us to understand not just the what and how, but also the why. They provide us a peek into the rich tapestry of human experience, making them an invaluable tool in the field of data collection. Interviews offer a deeper insight into a subject's experiences, feelings, and perceptions. Let's recap what we've learned so far. Our exploration into the world of research methodology has taken us on a journey through the various methods of data collection. As we've uncovered, these methods are not just tools, but powerful instruments that help transform raw data into meaningful insights. In our quest for understanding, we first delved into the concept of data collection. It's more than just gathering information. It's about gathering the right kind of information we learned that data collection is pivotal in the research process as it forms the basis for analysis and interpretation. Without it, our research would be like a ship without a compass, lost in a sea of uncertainty. We then explored the two major types of data, qualitative and quantitative. While the former gives us a deep, nuanced understanding of a subject through words, images, and objects, the latter provides us with numerical data that can be statistically analyzed. Like two sides of the same coin, they complement each other and enhance the overall understanding of our research topic. Next, we turned our attention to the power of observation. It's not just about watching, it's about watching with intent. Observation allows us to gather first-hand information, enabling us to see things as they are, not as we think they are. It's like being a detective, carefully noticing details and making sense of them. Lastly, we unraveled the potential of interviews. More than a conversation, an interview is an opportunity to delve deep into the subject's thoughts, feelings, and experiences. 
It provides a richness of detail that other methods may miss, giving us a fuller picture of our research subject. Remember, effective data collection is the foundation of any successful research. It's the bridge between the unknown and the known, the question and the answer. So, whether you're observing a natural phenomenon, conducting an interview, or crunching numbers, remember to approach it with curiosity, diligence, and a thirst for knowledge. Because in research, every piece of data matters, and every discovery brings us one step closer to understanding our world better. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.